here, Real Fit for Real Life, and this video is part of my Running for Real People series. So, um, today I'm going to show you what's in my runner's toolbox and go through as, as much info as possible. So, let's start with, um, obviously I have my shoes, I already talked about shoes, um, one thing that I did not talk about with shoes is socks. So I really love the um, Injinji brand toe socks. And these are really helpful um, if you tend to get blisters between your toes. So this will help your toes not rub up against each other. And I don't know, I just, I like a good toe spread. So these are my favorite socks. They do tell you not to dry them in the dryer so you don't get like the pills in your socks. Um, look for, I also like the Belega brand, but look for any kind of stitching on the bottom or sides, even if they stitch like their name or whatever. A, a, if a thread can come loose, then you don't want those socks because that can rub up against your skin and create blisters. So I know it seems like no big deal, but um, watch your socks. You want them to be wicking, um, but and you don't want anything like nothing no no design on the bottom or anywhere to you want it to be really seamless so check your socks but I really like the Injinji make sure you get the right size now if you do get a blister because sometimes like your feet expand in your shoes they get hot they they shift around maybe you didn't lace them right maybe you do have one foot that's a little bit smaller than the other so if you do get blisters um, and there are so many ways to help fix and solve your blisters. I know a lot of people like to use the um, those cutouts where it's got the, the moleskin. So moleskin some people really like. With running you get so sweaty. So I really like these blister band-aids. Um, they are way pricier than regular band-aids and they only come with a few in the box. But put it on dry skin and that will stay on for like a week. I mean, it'll stay on in the shower, it'll stay on when you sweat, and then ideally by the time you rip it off, it's it's totally healed up, and it's really soft and, and comfy. So I keep these on hand. It's tricky in the middle of a race to try to stop and put on a band-aid and it won't stick because you're sweaty. So if you know there's a spot, just preventative measure, use a blister band-aid. Um, I have sports legs. I don't like to push supplements because um, because I just don't think there's enough science and research in the industry to like promote a lot of supplements. And I don't know if there's been any studies on this supplement, but um, one of my elite marathon friends um, really swore by these, so I thought I'd give them a try. And they're sports legs. And it's basically just um, a calcium supplement. So it's got vitamin D, calcium, and magnesium, and lactate, which is supposed to help you with um, muscle soreness. So, you know, I don't really know if it helps a ton. Sometimes I thought, yeah, this really worked, and other times I'm like, this didn't help at all. So, I'm chafing. Chafing. Like I said, I've got thighs. Mama's got thighs, and these thighs can rub together when you're running. So uh, they make a lot of different um, glides, anti-friction. Um, Gold Bond makes some. There's a brand called Body Glide. Um, this is a spray called Dry Goods uh, that I've also tried. This is I like to use this on my feet. That's another uh, tip for helping you with blisters is putting some kind of Body Glide on your feet before you put on your socks. So I like this because it's got that menthol and it's nice and cool. The, the sticks are a little bit better, I think, for like arms and legs. You wouldn't think about your arms, but they're rubbing, you know, any kind of, if your shirt, if your top has any kind of stitching along the sides, which most of them do because that's how they're sewn, that's, you don't think anything of it in a few miles. But once you start getting into those double digit of miles, you've got major chafing and it can hurt and burn so bad you just want to rip your arm off. So 
they make like itty bitty ones of these that you can put in your fuel belt and I always have one of those because you know you sweat and maybe it gets worn off and I am like body gliding up in there. Men tend to have problems up front so they need to like put band-aids on their nipples or body glide their chest to help with chafing there. So chafing is real. It can be a problem when you're running long distances and you want to be comfortable. So anti -sh So much running garb. Is it all necessary? If you're running uber long distances and training a lot, yeah. So a fuel belt. Um, we were really lucky to score these from a guy who was such an elite athlete, he was sponsored. And he had so many fuel belts given to him that he did not know what to do with them. And he, so he just gave them to everyone on his Ragnar team. And we were lucky enough to be on his Ragnar team. So uh, we lucked out and got some free fuel belts because these aren't cheap. Well, maybe they're like 30 to 50 bucks. Um, but they're, they're worth it when you're training. It's re that's the trickiest thing with training is setting up your own porta potties and your own water stations and your own food stations. So you really have to run with it while you're training. It makes it easier. One thing that, you know, if you are smart, some mace, run with mace. This is if um, dogs come and run at you or, you know, a scary person. So there you go. Have some pepper spray on hand when you're when you're running. Um, try never to run alone. Like just be smart, be safe, have a buddy. Run in during busy hours um, in the daylight. You know, just be smart. Um, but yeah, like never mess with a runner, psycho people. Um, we're we are prepared. We've got our fuel belts. And then this is where you put all your little bottles of coconut water or water. Uh, you just always want to make sure you have plenty of hydration because I've been on a long run where I get, you know, to mile 20 and I'm out of water. And one time I looked at, I saw some horses at their like trough of water and literally I was contemplating if I climb that fence and just grab some water out of that trough, would the horse kick me in the face? And I really was like deliberating this and you know I in the end I decided to keep running because I was really scared about trespassing but I was that thirsty like dying and then later on some friends said you could have come to my house I was in the neighborhood so uh, but always be prepared with hydration have water nearby because there's nothing worse than like dying of thirst on your run and home is five miles away it's just like a nightmare so um, have a cell phone with you so you can call for help if you get abandoned and, and in trouble. Um, have your music with you. So this is nice because it's big and it has everything. It does mean that you're running heavy, but then on race day, um, you ditch the belt and you feel so light and free. And all of your water stations are there for you. And some, some people still like to run their race with their fuel belt because they've gotten so attached and it's their comfort and they have everything that that they need and they're not relying on uh, on the water stations and whatever. Because sometimes I've been in races where the water stations are not where they should be and you're just dying. So fuel belts, um, what is this, salt sticks. This is just another way to get your, um, your salt, your electrolytes during a long event. Um, and especially if it's hot and you're just losing a lot through sweat. So this, uh, you take one during a race, like every, or during a long training run, every 30 to 60 minutes. And it's just pure straight up sodium. And it does, I mean, it really does matter. These, I know it seems like so little and I don't really need that, but it does help you feel better and run better. And a lot of this advice I got from, uh, I'll throw it out there, Seth Wold, who's, who has won the Ogden Marathon, um, I, I want to say a couple times, but he's an amazing person and gave me a lot of uh, great and free advice. And so I appreciate that. And it does, like all of that nutrition stuff helps a ton. There's, I've got plenty of videos on like functional flexibility. Watch those. This, these will keep you like not hurting uh, between tr training runs and post race. This is another little handy doodad called a Theracane and it helps 
massage uh, traps, back, neck. I know that doesn't seem to relate to running, but your whole body is running when you're running. So that's another. If you're running in the dark, and that's early, early morning, late at night, um, Ragnar relays, you need reflective vests. Run safe, people. Just, I get so mad when I live now in Connecticut and they don't believe in street lights here. And the roads are uber narrow, very hilly. There's so many blind spots. It's very woodsy. And most of the roads are not safe for runners. They just aren't safe at all for runners. But I'll see people out there running in the dark, no reflective anything. And I'm just, it just kills me because it's, it's just not safe. And they could easily get hit by a car. And just imagine how that driver will feel for the rest of his or her life. So don't be a dumb runner, okay? Be conscientious. It's not all about you. Um, this is another thing they make you wear in Ragnar. And it's just another way if you're running at night, like wear a butt light. Butt light. So light yourself up as much as possible. And this is also if you're running at night and in the dark and it's a headlamp. And these are not might even work, might need new batteries. Um, they're not the most comfy things in the world, but it, you know, safety first. So these are some things you might wanna have if you are ever running a Ragnar or running in the dark, okay? So that's what's in my running toolkit. Let me know if you have any questions about those and I might be elaborating a little bit more on the nutrition hydration in another video. Thanks for joining me, Christy, Real Fit for Real Life.